Diana Ross is now about 80. How she lives is sad. Do you really know about the tragic life behind the spotlight of Diana Ross, an iconic figure in the world of music? It's definitely not as rosy as you think. Now at 80, the life she leads bears the scars of a relentless pursuit of success, a journey marked by its towering peaks and devastating lows. Despite her monumental contributions to the music industry, her story takes a somber turn, culminating in a tragic conclusion that few could have predicted. In this video, you will witness firsthand the difficulties that Diana Ross had to overcome. Some stories will shock you. Let's get started. Diana Ross stands as a towering figure in the world of music, yet her journey has been punctuated by a series of controversies and challenges. The Motown legend's life has been marked by turbulent relationships and legal issues, underscoring the complexities and scandals that have accompanied her illustrious career. Born on March 26, 1944 in Detroit, Michigan, Diana Ross emerged as a legendary American singer and actress. The second of six children, she was born to Ernestine and Fred Ross Sr. Although her mother had intended for her to be named Diane, a clerical error on the birth certificate resulted in her official name being recorded as Diana. Despite this, she was always known as Diana to her family and friends in Detroit. In a Baptist household, Diana Ross was raised alongside her siblings, two sisters, Barbara and Rita, and three brothers, Arthur, Fred Jr. and Wilbert, affectionately known as Chico. The family resided close to the famous Smokey Robinson, who was notably their neighbor. At the age of 14, a fortunate turn in Diana Ross's life occurred when Smokey Robinson generously provided the funds she needed for classes, a fact she disclosed later on. Additionally, Diana was actively involved in her school's extracurricular activities, notably joining the swim team, showcasing her diverse talents and interests beyond music. In a notable incident on December 30, 2002, Diana Ross encountered legal issues when she was arrested in Tucson, Arizona for driving under the influence. The arrest followed an incident where she was stopped for erratic driving and not halting at a red light. After failing a breathalyzer test, Ross was taken into custody. She subsequently entered a no-contest plea to the DUI charges, resulting in a sentence of two days in jail and one year on probation. As part of her sentence, Ross was required to complete substance abuse treatment and pay a monetary fine. Let's start exploring Diana's journey to shine like a superstar, because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos. Please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. Diana's professional journey commenced in 1960 with her role as a bus girl at Hudson's, a well-known department store in downtown Detroit. This job was a significant stepping stone in her path to fame, as it coincided with her joining the Primates, a female vocal group that paralleled the male ensemble, the Primes. Paul Williams, a Primes member, recognized Diana's potential and introduced her to music manager Milton Jenkins, setting the stage for her musical career. The primates featuring Diana, Florence Ballard, Mary Wilson and Betty McGlone, who was in a relationship with Paul Williams at the time, highlighted their collective talent by winning a talent competition in Windsor, Ontario in 1960. During their audition for Motown, the Primettes performed in front of several executives where Berry Gordy was particularly struck by Diana Ross's rendition of There Goes My Baby. His captivation with her voice opened up an opportunity for her, leading to roles beyond singing. Diana became involved in various aspects of the music industry, serving as a backup singer, stylist, makeup artist, seamstress and costume designer, all stemming from this pivotal moment. In 1964, their career took a significant turn with the release of Where Did Our Love Go, marking their first number one hit. This success laid the foundation for an extraordinary streak of achievements that followed. 1965 was a year of significant change for her. She began using the name Diana, a deviation from her birth name, Diane. Diana Ross's preferential treatment by Motown Records is often attributed to her romantic involvement with Berry Gordy, the label's founder. The relationship commenced in 1965, when Ross was 21 and Gordy was 36, remaining a closely guarded secret for an extended period due to Gordy's existing marital commitments and children with other women. 
the Coupley had a son, Ross Ananais, born in 1987, signalling a personal connection beyond their professional ties. Although their romantic relationship concluded in 1970, Ross and Gordy continued to maintain a friendship and professional collaboration. Diana Ross's ascent to stardom as the lead vocalist of The Supremes, a girl group that captivated the 1960s music scene, was not without its controversies. Her meteoric rise was marred by allegations of diva-like behavior and accusations of marginalizing her bandmates. Tensions peaked with Florence Ballard, who was ousted from the group in 1967 and replaced by Cindy Birdsong, and with Mary Wilson, who later detailed their disputes in a revealing 1986 memoir. Ross eventually left the Supremes in 1970 to pursue a solo career, but the bad blood between them lingered for decades. Diana Ross's solo career launched in May 1970 with her self-titled debut album, signalling the start of a prolific solo venture. The following year, in 1971, she clinched her first number one single in the UK with I'm Still Waiting, a testament to her burgeoning solo success. That same year, she made her debut in a solo television special, Diana, which notably included appearances by the Jackson Five, further cementing her status as a solo artist. Diana Ross ventured into the acting realm, delivering remarkable performances in movies, notably Lady Sings the Blues. Her role in the film garnered critical acclaim and led to a nomination for Best Actress at the Academy Awards. Additionally, the soundtrack of the film was a significant success, securing the number one position on the Billboard 200 chart and achieving sales of two million units. Diana Ross achieved her second number one hit in the US with the ballad Touch Me in the Morning in 1973. That same year, she collaborated with Marvin Gaye, a fellow Motown artist, on the duet album Diana and Marvin, which gained international acclaim. Their album produced timeless classics such as You're a Special Part of Me and Stop, Look, Listen to Your Heart, achieving significant success. However, behind the scenes, the two singers had a tense and awkward relationship. Reports suggest that Gaye's attraction towards Ross was not reciprocated, leading to tension. Additionally, Gay harbored feelings of resentment towards Ross due to her greater success and influence in the music industry. In the recording studio, they opted to lay down their vocals separately rather than together. And despite the success of their duets, they never performed live as a pair. The relationship dynamics took a complicated turn for Diana Ross in 1976, when she wed Robert Ellis Silberstein a music executive who had been managing her career since 1971. The couple had two daughters, Tracy Ellis Ross and Chudney Ross. Despite the union, happiness eluded them, primarily due to Ross's involvement in extramarital affairs. In 1977, she was romantically linked to actor Ryan O'Neill and subsequently fell for Bob Ellis, her co-star in the film Mahogany. At the time, Ellis was married to famed actress Joan Collins, and the affair between Ross and Ellis grabbed scandalous headlines in Hollywood. The turmoil led to Ross's divorce from Silberstein in 1977, after which she and Ellis began living together, further fueling the public and media intrigue. Diana Ross's personal life, particularly her relationship with Gene Simmons, the bassist and co-lead singer of the band Kiss, garnered public attention. Their relationship lasted until 1983 and began following a suggestion from Cher, who was a friend of Simmons from a previous relationship. Interestingly, Simmons later admitted that he fell in love with Ross while he was still dating Cher, leading to the end of the friendship between Ross and Cher. Diana Ross's life took a significant turn in 1985 when she encountered Arnenais Jr., a prominent Norwegian shipping magnate. The couple entered into marriage a year later in 1986. Through this union, Ross embraced the role of stepmother to Nyess's seven children, expanding her family. After more than 20 years with Motown, Diana Ross initiated negotiations in 1980 to part ways with the label that had been instrumental in her rise to fame. Motown bid farewell to Ross with a severance package amounting to $250,000. In a significant career move, RCA Records presented Ross with an enticing proposal. A seven-year recording contract worth $20 million, along with the promise of full production control over her albums. Demonstrating her allegiance and gratitude towards Motown, 
Ross sought to give Berry Gordy, the founder of Motown, an opportunity to counter the offer, reflecting her loyalty to the label while also signaling her eagerness to embrace new creative avenues. Diana Ross expanded her professional horizons by founding Anaid Productions, cleverly named by spelling Diana backward and delving into the world of real estate investment. Her passion for music remained undiminished as she persistently toured across the United States and internationally. These tours not only highlighted her sustained prowess and charisma as a performer, but also reinforced her status as an enduring icon in the music industry. Diana Ross's illustrious career was further immortalized on May 6, 1982, when she received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, affirming her legacy as a legendary artist. Building on the momentum of Why Do Fools Fall In Love, she released Silk Electric, an album that included the hit single Muscles penned and produced by Michael Jackson. The success of Muscles, which not only secured a spot in the top 10, but also garnered gold record sales, underscored Ross's ongoing impact and achievement in the music industry. Diana Ross showcased her philanthropic spirit in 1985 by participating in the charity single We Are The World by USA for Africa, a project that witnessed remarkable global success with over 20 million copies sold. This endeavor not only emphasized her dedication to charitable causes, but also her unique talent for reaching people's hearts through music. Diana Ross took center stage in 1986 as the host of the 13th annual American Music Awards, where her natural charisma and hosting prowess were on full display. Beyond her entertainment career, Ross's active participation in charitable activities further demonstrated her deep compassion and unwavering commitment to contributing positively to the world. In 2007, Diana Ross was honored with the BET Awards Lifetime Achievement Award, recognizing her monumental influence on the music industry and her role as a pioneering figure. The award was dedicated to the memory of Michael Jackson, her late friend, underscoring Ross's significant relationships within the music community and her enduring impact on successive generations of artists. Diana Ross's significant impact on music and culture has earned her widespread acclaim and honors. Her induction into the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2011 further cemented her iconic status. In February 2012, Ross received a Grammy Award for Lifetime Achievement, marking a belated but deserved recognition of her remarkable musical contributions. Additionally, her role in announcing the Album of the Year nominees underscored her ongoing influence and esteemed standing in the music industry. Diana Ross's career is marked by collaborations with an impressive roster of artists such as Dusty Springfield, Aretha Franklin, Martha Reeves and Dionne Warwick, demonstrating her adaptability and the high regard in which she is held by her contemporaries. In 2023, her remarkable contributions were further acknowledged when Rolling Stone ranked her as the 87th greatest singer of all time, a testament to her lasting influence on the music industry. Both fans and fellow musicians continue to celebrate and honor Ross's legacy, reflecting the deep and enduring impact she has made on the world of music. Diana Ross's life and career over the past 80 years encapsulate a remarkable journey of resilience, talent and transformation. From her beginnings in Detroit to becoming a global music icon and a figure of significant cultural impact, her story is one of immense dedication and groundbreaking achievements. Her ability to navigate the complexities of fame, personal challenges and evolving music landscapes speaks to her enduring strength and versatility as an artist. Ross's influence extends beyond her musical hits. Her pioneering role as a black woman in the entertainment industry has paved the way for future generations, breaking down barriers and setting new standards. Despite facing controversies and personal trials, her legacy as a member of the Supremes and as a solo artist remains untarnished, celebrated for her contributions to music, fashion and culture. Her collaborations with other legendary artists, her recognition in esteemed lists and awards and her ability to remain relevant in the music industry for decades highlight a career built on talent, adaptability and a profound connection with audiences around the world. Diana Ross's life story is not just about her as an entertainer but also her as a symbol of perseverance and grace in the face of adversity. Overall, 
Diana Ross's 80-year journey in building her career is a testament to her indomitable spirit, her unparalleled talent, and her significant impact on music and society. It's a narrative that inspires admiration and respect, making her one of the most enduring figures in the world of entertainment. What do you think about Diana Ross's life during her 80 years of building her career? Join the conversation by dropping a comment below. Press 1 if you felt a connection with this story, or Daur if it didn't resonate with you. Your insights and feedback are invaluable as we explore stories that delve into the essence of human experience. Thank you for watching, and we eagerly anticipate your participation in future videos. Goodbye.